This video is going to pull together several things I covered in the three previous videos and then add one more layer, that being what to do when one building occurs in multiple locations on a site. So let's go ahead and jump in. We're going to start in the site file. We're going to go to the north elevation and I'm going to rename level one to sea level. You can refer back to the previous videos for more on this. And because we're going to have more than one building, I'm going to call this building A now instead of level one. So we're going to insert the CAD link. We're not going to have it correct lines. Positioning doesn't matter. And right now, see, it'll place it at sea level, which is what we want. And by the way, this site plan, if you notice in properties, the associated level is sea level. So now if we go back to the north elevation, you can see the bottom of this CAD link aligns with sea level. So it's vertically positioned correctly. And we're going to want to move it in the XY so that the site itself is closer to Revit's origin, which is a really important step. So once this is positioned X, Y, and Z, now we can acquire the shared coordinates. So now that we've done that, the shared coordinates for the entire project is based on the civil CAD file, which is great. So the survey point now has moved to align with the CAD's origin, so we can get correct uh, positioning. And while we're here, we'll go ahead and create a topo surface using the contours and the pond polylines that are at the correct elevation. So we have this accurate Revit site model. Now one workflow is to bring the building in position it properly and publish shared coordinates, but that doesn't work in BIM 360 as you can only acquire, you cannot publish coordinates because you cannot change other files in BIM 360 the way it works. So we're gonna show a method here that just always works versus trying to remember which context you're in. So in the proposed building, we're gonna link in the Revit site file doesn't matter the positioning. We need to go into the Revit link settings and turn on the DWG link. We're gonna go to the north elevation for just a moment. And if we grab this and just sort of move it out of the way, we can see building A, sea level. So we're going to want to align building A with level 1. So use the align command. So now this is positioned vertically properly for where we want it. Of course we need to move it in plan. So we're going to go back to the plan view. Use the rotate command. And we'll just sort of leave it at an angle, something like that. So back here in 3D, you can see it's in the right spot. So we've verified it's in the correct spot. If we quickly turn on the survey point here, we can see that it's currently aligned with level one. And once we acquire the shared coordinates, it will align with sea level. So we're going to select the Revit site and acquire shared coordinates. So now you can see, if we zoom way out, the survey point moved to the CAD origin at 00, zero and aligns with sea level. Now what gets really interesting is, well, what happens if this building, a version of it also needs to be in a different spot like this, this other property 
on the other side of this existing building. Well, that's actually pretty easy to accomplish. So first we'll save real quick. And then on the Manage tab, if we go to Location, Site, we're going to rename this to Building A. And then there's not an option for New, but this is sort of like phasing where you can duplicate. You can't create a new one, but you can duplicate. So we'll call this Building B. And so as you can see, nothing changed here. If we go back into Location, Site, Building A is current. If we select Building B and make it current, nothing still changed. And that also makes sense because we just duplicated Building A's positioning. So if you remember from the previous video, if we want to move this a certain distance to the left, like 160 feet, we grab the survey point and move it that same distance the other direction. And then with the survey point selected, I'm just going to do a little bit of nudging, but of course you could do all of this more accurate using the move command like I just did to move it 160 feet. So now here's where the sort of magic comes into place. If we go back and set building A current, now the building's on the first site. And then if we set building B current, the building's on the second site. And one last adjustment here is if maybe the grade changes such that building B needs to be at a taller elevation, it actually sort of doesn't here, but we're going to pretend it does just to make a point. So we want to move it up 10 feet. We're going to move the survey point down 10 feet. And then if we go to the 3D view, you can see the building sort of hovering above the grade. Make one quick adjustment here. We don't want a, a fake ground plane. So the shadows fall accurately down onto the topo surface. Now watch what happens when we switch the site. We see that the building moved to the other site and uh, at a lower elevation. So that's all we need to do in the building file. If we go back into the site file, now we get an interesting opportunity when we go to link in the Revit building file. So proposed building by shared coordinates, now that the proposed building has shared coordinates set up in it, and because there's two site definitions defined in that file, we're going to get an intermediate prompt that you don't normally get. Do you want to be currently placing building A or building B? So let's place building A. And then if we re repeat that process, building, proposed building, by shared coordinates, there's a message here. We just click past and then we get the opportunity to place building B. And you can see that they're in their correct positions and at different elevations. I didn't make a building B level. Doesn't really matter. We didn't need a building A either. It's just sort of for reference. And we're not seeing building B right now because of its uh, elevation. It's above the cut plane because it's 10 feet up in the air. Now here's the last thing I'm going to show you, and you've probably been using Revit links forever and maybe never quite knew what this was for. But if we go into the visibility graphics for this view, Revit links, when we expand this option here for proposed buildings, here's building A and building B. 
so you can control the visibility of each instance separately. Normally you just have one sub item here and it can be really confusing because you can change that, but normally if it's just one instance, you should just be changing the main link. And even in this case, if you just wanted to turn off the furniture for both of them, you could do that in the main link. But here you have the option of, of hiding building B in this view. And then I guess just to show a couple of things, like let's say we wanted to change true north on this building and the elevation a little bit lower on this building. If you remember from previous videos, we never change anything in the site file once shared coordinates are set up with this workflow. So we're gonna go back into the proposed building. And if we wanted to change true north for this building, first we need to make sure that the orientation is set to true north. And notice how it already has true north understood because we acquired the coordinates from the civil CAD file. We never had to set up true north in this, in this file. On the manage tab under position, there's a rotate true north option. So maybe that building wants to be rotated more that way or, or now I'm just sort of making a mess of it, but Maybe it wants to be more orthogonal or parallel, I should say, to the adjacent property line. So now that this position is set up correctly for building A, I'll switch to building B, go to an elevation, select the survey point. So I want to move it down maybe four feet. That means I'll move the survey point up four feet. And so I've just adjusted this vertically and the true north for building A. I'm going to save this and then when I go back into the site, everything's just updated and works just fine. So I'm going to go to the building A floor plan. And actually, if I go to the site plan, we'll see both buildings because this has a higher cut plane. But you can see how this building is now more parallel to the property line. And if we go to one of the elevations, maybe I'll just cut a section because you can see the elevations are down here, the original ones. So that this building moved down four feet. So that's a whirlwind look at shared coordinates again, but this time looking at uh, the buildings being in uh, a single building being in different locations on the same site file.